I got tired of being brainwashed by society to serve interests that were not my own, so I decided that the most important thing in my life was my mind, that everything that I experience is filtered through my mind, so I had to retake control of my mind from the people who would manipulate me to have a particular worldview, just like they manipulate everybody else. And I decided that I was going to take control and re-brainwash myself for the success that I wanted in my life. Now, everybody is brainwashed. We all start off brainwashed, right? And we're brainwashed by people who oftentimes do not have our best interest in mind, right? The societal brainwashing mechanism, which con consists of the education system, the government, the media, Hollywood, it all works together to brainwash us to have a very limited, narrow view of reality a very materialistic, atheistic view of reality that leaves us very, very little power, right? That leaves us with this born this way mentality that, hey, if you're not rich or if you're not, uh, you don't have the personality that you would like or whatever it is about you, you're born that way. In other words, if you're born that way, you can't really do anything about it. You're stuck in this tiny little narrow box and there's nothing that you can do to get out. So it's funny if you look at most of the uh, politicians and most of the people in power are members of groups like the Freemasons. And if you look at the things that the Freemasons believe even, it is very spiritualist. It's a lot of esoteric woo-woo stuff, the sort of stuff that their propaganda mechanisms tells us that we're a bunch of big stupid idiots if we believe in it. But they think the opposite. And in fact, if you look at the Masons' um, literature, they say that who they do not allow to be part of their memberships are fools, madmen, and atheists. Right, so they think that if you're in this little box of all, oh, the only thing that exists in the world are the things that I can sense with my five senses or perhaps with scientific instruments to expand slightly, but anything outside of that couldn't possibly exist, right? They think that you're an idiot. So they are trying to keep you in this little idiot box. They're not in that box. They're trying to keep you in there because they want to have the information advantage. They want to have the power that comes from knowing the things that exist outside of the box, but keeping you in the little box so you'll be a good little factory worker drone for your whole life. So you have to realize that the information that's been given to you, the brainwashing that has been put upon you by the education system and the media and such, and oftentimes by your parents because they're just products of the same thing, and your teachers, they're just products of the same system. They've been brainwashed the same way. It does not exist for your interest. It exists for the interest of the people that are pulling the strings of these institutions. And so if you want to have a good life, then you have to realize this and you have to break free from this tiny little box that they try to put you in. And in order to do that, you have to first recognize that you have already been brainwashed and then you have to re-brainwash yourself, which is what I did for myself and what I'm gonna show you how to do in this video. So how do you re-brainwash yourself? Well, once you realize that the mainstream propaganda machine is not disseminating information that is in your benefit, you have to cut it off and you have to replace it with information that lifts you up, which expands your view of reality, which gives you more power. So what do I mean by that? Well, think about what most people normally consume. They pull out their phone and look at their Facebook feed. Are they being intentional? No, it's just whatever happens, the algorithm happens to put in front of them is what they watch, right? Same with any other kind of social media, same with TV, if you just turn on the TV and you watch whatever programming happens to be available and notice that they use that word programming very ironically because they are programming your brain with this stuff. Most people do not use any sort of intentionality. They just watch whatever happens to come in front of their face. And the people that like to manipulate your reality are the ones who control what is what comes in front of your face. So what do you do specifically? Well, for myself, I came up with five action steps that would allow me to re-brainwash myself. Action step number one is to replace useless or counterproductive information content with useful, productive, empowering information content. So specifically, I would stop watching TV. I would stop watching movies, unless it was a TV program or a movie that was specifically helpful. Like, there, then there are a few, like Shark Tank might be interesting if you're getting into business. And there are other things like that, which if you use intentionally, uh, then they might be helpful. But the vast majority of TV is either 
non-productive or counterproductive is actually hurting your progress, brainwashing you in the opposite ways you want. So I would take that useless stuff, the Facebook and the Instagram and the TV, and replace it with content that was actually useful for me, that was actually going to help me get towards my goals, right? So I could replace it with books that I chose and I knew were good, or I got recommendations from people I trusted, or I would replace them with online courses to do something specific, to get some sort of specific result in my life or I replace them with uh, YouTube channels that I knew and trusted and I knew were going to give me good information. Which speaking of YouTube by the way, YouTube is kind of a limbo. Like YouTube can be productive or it can be totally non-productive and it really depends on how you use it. Remember we were talking about being intentional. Well if you're just looking at your feed what the algorithm happens to give you on YouTube, that's not very intentional. Now if you're looking at a bunch of productive stuff, well then you're telling the algorithm that's what you're interested in and it might give you more productive stuff. That might work, but if you're more intentional that'll be more helpful. So if you actually go to the channel that you know are helpful to you rather than just taking whatever's recommended or you actually go search in the search bar how to do XYZ. Right? Search for specifically what it is that you are interested in learning that's going to help you get closer to your goals and make your life better. So that's step one is to replace useless content with useful content. Now step two is to set specific rules for yourself, right? Because it's really hard to do this long term unless you actually set specific. So what I did and the best rule I ever set for myself was that I was only going to go on social media that is Facebook and Instagram at the time, but you can use this for whatever social media you happen to be addicted to. I was only going to do this once per day. And that's it because I was finding myself super addicted. I had gotten to the point where I was driving in the car and every time I stopped at a red light like I would compulsively look at my phone and check my notifications and I noticed this I'm like okay this is not good. This is addictive behavior. This is not doing good for my life. So I set myself the rule that I was only going to look at these platforms one time a day and after that if I had the urge that compulsive addictive need to look at my phone to look at my stupid notifications I was going to put the phone down instead I was going to pick up a book that was something that was useful to me, right? And so I bought some books that I knew would be good for me. And by the way, if you need book recommendations to take a look at the other content on my channel, I've got a bunch of good book recommendations. But anyway, I was gonna have a book that was helpful for me to get to my goals and I was gonna pick that up instead of picking up the phone and social media. And then another rule that I set for myself that I picked up from my mentor Myron Golden is that I was not going to watch any TV until I hit $20,000 a month in revenue in my business. He says that if you're making less than 20k a month you can't afford to watch TV, right? It's too expensive because it's ruining your brain and it's making you unable to make money, right? And, and TV is so bad because it puts these subliminal messages in. Like there's this one show that I used to watch a lot that I really liked called uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, which was a funny show, but the whole plot of the show, every single episode, is this group of people gets this idea for some sort of business venture, something cool they wanted to do, and it completely fails. Right, so you're just programming your brain over and over and over again with, hey, you try to do something big, it's gonna flop. And so, you know, you might not even realize it consciously, but subconsciously, that's the thing, that's what you were repeating to yourself, to your subconscious, that if you try to do something, it's not gonna work. So obviously, and that's why most people in the world, if they hear that you're trying to do something big, they discourage you, they pull you down, they say, oh, that can't be real, that's a scam, you're gonna lose money, you're gonna lose time, you don't have the right personality for that, blah, 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 blah. They give you a thousand excuses why you can't possibly do it. Right, because most people are utterly brainwashed by these people who don't want you to think that way. They want you to just think in your little cubicle and do the same thing every single day and take drugs because you're depressed. So anyway, that's step number two is to set specific rules for yourself with numbers and specifics of what you are going to consume and what you are not going to consume. Now action step number three is to curate the people in your life. That's right, you have to choose who you are going to spend time with and who you are not going to spend time with because you know that not everybody in your life is a good influence, right? Some people are really good influences, somebody are really bad influences, and some people are kind of in between. And so you want to adjust the amount of time you spend with those people based on that. You want to spend more time with the people that are going to push you up, who are going to encourage you, who are going to help you, and spend less time with the people who pull you down, even if those people are close to you and even 
even if those people have good intentions and that's why they're pulling you down, which is often true, right? A lot of people really think that you're just going to fail at everything you do and they're trying to save you from being hurt. However, they're not helping you, even if they think they are. And so you got to spend less time with those people. You don't have to cut them out completely, right? But just be cognizant of how you, you are programming yourself by being around those people. Like people say, you are the, the total of the five people you spend the most time with. Well, I don't think that's entirely true because now you can spend time with content, right? You can spend time with people by watching YouTube videos or reading books. Right, but the same concept still applies. If you have negative influences, it's going to pull you down no matter how strong a person you think you are. So curate the people in your life. Now, action step four is to go to live events. I try to go to a live event once a month at least, in person if possible. If not, I can do it online, but actual live events where you hear and meet and interact with people who are doing better than you, who are a step or a few steps ahead of you on your journey to whatever it is that you're trying to achieve, whether that's in business or your career or your health goals, but you see those people and you, you get into their mindset. Their energy rubs off on you. It's the same thing as curating the people that you're around. If you're around people who make a lot of money and to them making money is easy, it starts to get into your mentality that, oh, making money is easy, making money is normal. And once you have that mentality, that's when you can actually go out and just do it, and it feels natural to you. It's absolutely invaluable to get that face time with people who are ahead of you in some way in the goals that you would like to get to. So that's step four. Now step five, and probably the most important one, is to discipline your thoughts. Discipline your thoughts. Don't just let your mind run rampant with whatever it happens to come to it, right? And, you know, we could talk all day about what determines what comes into your mind, right? There are influences that are coming into your mind that you do not understand. And so I could get woo-woo about where they're all coming from, but the point is that you curate your thoughts. If you have a thought that is not serving you, a thought that says, oh, whatever I'm going to do, it's not going to work, and how I'm going to embarrass myself, and I'm not the right type of person, and I'm not smart enough, and I'm not outgoing enough, Enough and blah, 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 blah. We all have that stupid little voice talking to us, uh, telling those kind of things, right? But we just cut it off. We say, no, I'm not going to entertain that thought. I'm going to consciously take that thought that is not serving me. I'm going to replace it with a thought that is serving me, or at the very least, a thought that's neutral. So I can listen to that voice when it says, oh, well, what if it doesn't work and you embarrass yourself and everything's terrible? And I can say, well, no, I'm not going to think that way. I'm going to start thinking about what it is, what's going to happen when it does work, right? I'm going to think about like what it is that what my life is going to look like. What am I going to do with that extra money? How am I going to feel when it does work, right? Because my mind is mine. I have control over my mind. I'm not going to outsource it to whatever influences happen to be trying to control it. I'm going to control it myself. I'm going to discipline my mind because I know that the mind is the creator of my reality. So that's how I've managed to brainwash myself and my life has gotten exponentially better as a result and continues to get better every single day. Now this is not something that happens overnight, right? You don't just go from letting your thoughts running wild to disciplining your thoughts one day to the next. It's a process. It's an exercise that you have to keep doing, but the more you do it, the better let your life will get both internally in your own mind and the reality that is created around you will continue to get better and better and better. So give that a try. And if you do want to continue re-brainwashing yourself for success, instead of to being a controlled little desk drone like society wants you to be, then check out this video where I talk all about the lessons that I learned from a 17-year-old millionaire.